Hey Team Beal, I'm Airman First Class Tommy Wilburn. We're back with another edition of Commander's Corner with your Wing Commander, Colonel Larry Broadwell. Sir, uh, you've been here for about a year now. We just want to talk about maybe some updates that uh, have been taking place on base in your year um, and also some updates that may be happening in the future. Sure. We've had a lot of people asking uh, about the Wheatland Gate. Right. Uh, can you give us any update on uh, the status of that and when yeah, it might so open? You bet. So construction has um, has begun. It was delayed slightly. There were some some birds that were nesting uh, in the construction area. So once they were relocated, um, the construction began. So we're slightly delayed, uh, anticipating October to be done uh, with the construction and opening up the, the gate back. Awesome. Outstanding. So the enlisted pilots program, they started their training uh, this month, actually. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, how does, how is that program going so far? And um, how can you see it benefiting our base in the future? Yeah, so anytime, well, first off, the program is going very well. And, um, you know, I think that we wanna, I wanna slowly migrate away from calling it a program, right? So it is, uh, enlisted pilots are part of the pilot force for the RQ-4. Uh, and they are doing very, very well. In fact, one of the two distinguished graduates from the recent course um, the, grad, the 18X graduation at uh, Randolph was a distinguished graduate, which, which says a whole heck of a lot about the enlisted force. And that's, that's really what I want us to f uh, focus on. You know, the, the enlisted force is the backbone um, of the United States Air Force. They're extremely talented. Uh, that's what sets our Air Force and really our military uh, uh, apart from others around the globe. And air, our enlisted airmen are no different. And so they've done really well so far and I expect nothing but uh, great results from them here at Beale Air Force Base. Wonderful. We've seen some signs at the, uh, at the Harris Fitness Center mm -hmm. about some updates, expansions. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us on maybe what's happening with that? Sure. What's going to be coming uh, in the future for sure. Harris Fitness so, Center? <clears throat> like many things on the base, uh, it takes a really long time to make uh, um, large impact uh, at, at the base. and so. Uh, the Harris Fitness Center is one that we've been working for a long time. We were able to secure a little over four million dollars to renovate the Harris Fitness Center. Uh, we expect uh, it's 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 FY18 money, which means sometime in FY18 the construction will begin. We believe it's going to happen sooner rather than later. So I would anticipate this fall uh, construction will begin. Uh, during that renovation, uh, one of the principal upgrades is the, the HVAC system in the gym. It's just, it's completely inadequate. So that's going to be renovated. They're going to open up about 2,300 square feet uh, in the second floor to give us some more room. They're going to open up the lobby area, redo the locker rooms, maybe install a juice bar, those kinds of things. So the, what I want in the end, uh, after about a six or eight month uh, construction project, <clears throat> in the end, I want an airman it's at Beale Air Force Base, whether they be an officer enlisted uh, civilian airman to walk into the fitness center and go, yeah, this is, this is a place where I want to work out. This is an indication that our Air Force cares about me and my health and my, my, my fitness and how it relates to readiness. Um, and I think, they, I think they're going to feel that when they get into the new fitness center. I would offer a bit of caution, however. In that six or eight month period, we're going to be without the Harris Fitness Center. And so the benefit is going to uh, going to drive a cost that we're all going to have to pay. So in that, in that interim period, they're going to bring some equipment over into the Omni. And they're also going to, it was a pretty unique idea, they're going to take some equipment and put it on the covered pad over by the track uh, so that we can work out in those. So it'll be some of the cooler months and so we can work out outside, work out in the Omni Fitness Center. But uh, I just, we, we just, I'm hoping that I'll get, um, uh, everybody can maintain their patience and understanding during this period of transition. Absolutely. Are there any more updates uh, that'll be happening here at Beale uh, in, in the future? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, first off, I, I just want to say thanks to uh, the men and women of the Ninth Reconnaissance Wing. You know, over the last year, you've made the extraordinary look ordinary. Uh, and one of the things we regularly don't talk about are the tens of thousands of flight hours or the thousands of missions or the countless number of, of our service member that um, that you, because of your efforts, uh, you've brought home safely. Uh, and it is not lost on me and it's not lost on our most senior leaders um, how what you do in the Ninth Reconnaissance Wing, whether it be at here or at Grand Forks or any of our other FOLs, what you do to defend our nation is critical. Um, it's, it's simply amazing. We don't talk enough about that. 
I'm extremely proud to be part of that team. Uh, there's, we are also, we're, we're on the cutting edge of uh, tactical command and control. We've been given the responsibility in the ninth wing to stand up an organization called the Common Mission Control Center. Um, it is, it is, uh, that organization is flourishing and I'm really excited about what they're going to be able to deliver to the United States Air Force. We're doing things with our U-2 aircraft that we haven't done in 20 years, deploying them to, to Red Flag earlier last year and then uh, the, the huge impact that we saw Northern Edge uh, here just a, a couple of months ago. Uh, RQ-4s are doing the same thing. We have some very aggressive uh, uh, tacticians in the RQ-4 community that are uh, really starting to uh, expand the horizon of what the RQ-4 can do. I'm very, very proud uh, of all of them. Thanks for tuning in, Team Beal, for another edition of Commander's Corner with your Wing Commander, Colonel Larry Broadwell. If you have any questions for future episodes, be sure to ask them on our Facebook, our Twitter, or through our email.